Well, hello there. So today I want to go over more of the digital inputs on the Decision Maker 3000 or DEC 3000 as everybody else in the industry knows it. There are four variants of this guy. Um, probably three you're only going to see in the wild and actually recognize him. Hell, I, unless I'm pulling it off, I'm not going to recognize uh, the third variant. So you got Decision Maker 1 that doesn't say anything. That's the first variant. Decision Maker, where it says Decision Maker 3000, that's the second, third variant. Um, the third variant um, has a different color control board and a few tweaks on the controller. The third one is the brand new one, and it's um, it's actually called the Decision Maker APM 402. It's a um, it's a half breed child between Kohler and SDMO, and if you didn't know, SDMO is a uh, French company that um, Kohler bought out. And basically, if they're still operating out there, kind of like their own entity, um, but you know, it's basically it's Kohler now. But they make relatively good products, except the Telemetsis controllers. Anyway, let's uh, go on to the first thing I wanted to talk about why we have this thing apart. First thing is, you have three digital inputs. Let me get some light on there. So digital input one, digital input two, digital input three. They all loop back down to this ground to become active and then you have two analog inputs right here for like you know fuel float and other whatnots why we're here let's talk about the one output that this has on it it's um the second wire in and let me get a pointer here this one and this one right here are your common they're both there and internally tied together then you have a normally, normally open and a normally closed. They go back to this relay right here. Oh, also, this is lay, this output, this relay right here, if I get this in frame, this relay right here is labeled as um, A1 in Site Tech. This one is labeled as uh, A1, A2, A3 in Site Tech, or digital digital input or digital yeah digital input one to a1 a2 and a3 so let's go to the meat potatoes so that I can kind of show you what I was why I brought you guys here for Urgh. might hear the thing kicking and screaming a little bit while I plug it in takes a second for it to settle down Let's see, you can see the screen a little bit. So why it's loading the, uh, the event history, let's look at this guy. Everyone uses these five rel relay outputs. And um, you have two analog inputs right here. Then um, if you look in the book, it says this can be used as a digital input, but it doesn't say how to it, how to, how to do it. And I had to learn the hard way how to do it. And it involves taking a 120 ohm resistor, which quit, is actually the same, it was the same value as for the Modbus circuits for an end, end, um, end of line resistor. So, like I said, this is uh, digit, or analog input B1, analog in input B2. So since we're all loaded up here, let's scroll down to the bottom. Or, all right, we got down to the bottom. See how it says uh, right here? It says uh, 49.65 percent, and around 51 around there. The reason why it says that is it's kind of floating off in a never-never land um, with um, just uh, picking up phantom, phantom voltages on the board. All electronics do this. I believe the reason why it flows this flows around 50% is because 50% uh, is a pretty neutral number, and they um, they have internal resistance set that way on this board so that it will float around there. Anyway, we want to prevent that from happening, so what we're going to do. I have a 120 ohm resistor 
We're going to take it from ground and put it to VP1. Let me get some light on that ground to VP1 right there. We're going to plug it this bad boy in. Now, see how that dropped to 15%? Basically, what we're doing is we're pulling, we're overriding that resist the that value, trying to hold it at 50%. We drop, we pulled it down to ground so that it's close to 50, 15 percent or ish or something like that. So let's let's make this a very analogy um, a very analogy uh, alarm. So we're gonna you, first we have to set this as a high warning because we're gonna we're gonna close put. B plus that terminal. I'm going to turn this on as a battery charger fault. And we're going to take my good old stainless steel sensor right here, otherwise known as TIG wire. And we're going to take it from the 5 volts and put the VP1. Now we're gonna watch that value. How it popped up to 80. Now check this out. I'm gonna hit apply changes. Now we have a battery charger fault. I like to set the high warning limit to a set to 70 percent. And then what that does is it helps give you know, eliminate accidental phantom alarms or anything like that. So you're going to be rolling, you're going to be rolling, rolling nice and clean. So, all right. Any questions? Good. You guys have a great day. Bye bye. Oh, I forgot to say on the, if you have to use B2, it's going to uh, just repeat the step. It's pretty easy. Uh, so, um, I forgot to go over why you'd use this and uh, where it would be implemented. Basically if uh, you need, let's say I've ran across this, this is how I figured it out. Excuse me. Uh, so let's say you need a, uh, a fuel leak alarm, a critically low fuel alarm, a um, low fuel alarm, a high fuel alarm, a critically high fuel alarm, and a mechanical battery charger fail. That's six alarms. So, first of all, if you go over to P1-4, which is wire 64, that could be your fuel leak alarm. And um, they'll get rid of one for you. Then you come over to this controller, you have three digital inputs. So you got, boom, you just wiped four off the table. So you come back over this board, and boom, you have two more uh, inputs so you just barely you know scraping the table with it but you're able to take care of business with what what you got make sense all right you guys have a great day bye bye